Indeed, in him, in Jesus' name, let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bring down every force of darkness that comes when the word of God is in operation. Right now, open our eyes, ears, everything about us. We commit everything totally in your hands in Jesus' name. Forgive our trespasses, forgive our shortfalls. As far as this time and hour is concerned, it is all about you, Jesus. It is all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Reveal in our depth, reveal depths wider, reveal this secret today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Clap hands for Jesus and sir, sit down, please. Amen. I welcome you to today's wonderful, great service. Amen. God will do greater as usual. Remember, we are in the new month. It's just days are just going. Today actually is the 11th, imagine. 11th of August. But it's always good news every day. Amen. It's always one good news every day. Now, today, we want to go into the part one of the theme of this month. Number one, I want you to have always ongoing reflection about whatever the Holy Spirit is taking us from month to month to month. Amen. Because it's about building. It's about ourselves putting scales and scales, levels and what levels of the word. Amen. I have come to understand, I always tell you, I watch a lot of things because of my, my job, current news. I come to understand I was watching these uh, Olympics. Something happened. The, these high jumpers, you know, you, you know the people, they, they do their jumpers. Now, the high jumpers, if you look at them, what they do is they go so high, but when they are coming down, they've got a mattress that is, that is put on. The... <laughs> they put, I was watching, and then the Holy Spirit started giving me this. This is forming a part of what we are doing this month. Revelation. Amen? Revelation. So I was watching this when this poor food guy or who they were able, when they are about to go there, they are sure that the mattress is going to work to protect them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore, I looked and I watched that this mattress is not thin. It is so thick. It is it has had a lot of tests going through in order to accommodate this guy who goes so high up to come down on your feet. This is what the word of God is all about. Hallelujah. No matter how high, how big a temptation will be, the word of God will make sure that as you are falling on it, healing takes place. As you are falling on this mattress of the word of God, of the revelations that you are having, your victory is guaranteed. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we cannot do without the word. The word is our protection. The word is our empowering force. The word is our healing. Hallelujah. Just as this guy, you can imagine if this guy, he went so high. And as he is coming back, somebody removed that mattress. <laughs> Imagine, that's the devil. So the devil comes in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The devil is very busy trying to steal every word that you receive. He will use your loved ones. He will use your brethren. He will use so many people that he wants condition situations in order to remove every word that you receive. So that when you are sick, you fall where there is no mattress. When you are sick, you fall where there are no stripes of Jesus. When the enemy comes like a flood, the standard is not there. But for you, this month, every revelation in the name of Jesus from scriptures that you have will open your way. 
will make you to shine. I am saying to you, you cannot shine when there is no light. That's why the Bible in Isaiah says, Arise and what? Shine. Arise and shine. Because you cannot in any way shine when there is no light. Hallelujah. So may this month in Jesus' name bring such great intensity of life in your life in Jesus' name. We have received redemption, but now is high time to receive and to seek revelation from the scriptures. Hallelujah. I repeat, we have received redemption, but it is high time now to receive revelations from the scriptures. We shall not be lazy. We shall not be in any way compromised. No, we know just as you work so hard for your bread and butter, work so hard for revelation. Read the scriptures. Hallelujah. Grind the scriptures. Amen. Because the depth of your understanding, ladies and gentlemen, determines the depth of your results. Hallelujah. The depth of your understanding determines the depth of your results. Hallelujah. Therefore, who is the owner of these revelations? He is the most ignored one. Who is the owner of these revelations? I have come to realize that critical things, they are repetitive. Those things that are critical, you go in the where Jehoshaphat works in, in, in the a and &E, you will find that critical things, they are what? Repetitive. Breathing is repetitive because it is critical. Hallelujah. If you are starting to walk, you have to keep on walking because it is what? Critical. Amen. Therefore, what am I trying to, to say today? You have heard about the Holy Spirit, but he is the most ignored one to in believers. The Holy Spirit is the least in the lives of many believers. They have heard about him, but he is the owner of revelations, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Spirit is the only one that we will show you how we will show you when we will show you the intensity will give you the warning hallelujah therefore in this month i want you to acquaint yourself and come and be part of this holy spirit man amen john 16 verse 13 thank you jesus we are hungry to be deep rooted in your revelations in jesus name Thank you, Mother God. Thank you, King of Kings. So, who is the owner of Revelation? John 16, verse 13 says, However, when he, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you into, when he has come, he will guide you into how many truths? All oh, truths. He is the most ignored one. When you sit in your classroom, when you sit in your job, when you are driving, when you are talking, when you are eating, he will do all these things that you need to know to do the know-how. He will reveal it all to you. The Bible says he will guide you in all truth, not lies. Hallelujah. I have come to realize, I keep on saying, oh, the world is unfair. The world is unfair. The world is unfair. It's true. There is so much unfairness and you cannot do anything about it. But the thing that you can do about it is a favor. Hallelujah. You know, the thing that you need to go about is to have a redemption that when you are redeemed in his grace, there is what? 
favor. Favor makes it all different. Fairness will always be there. That's why the angel comes to Mary. What did he say? He didn't say, you highly feared. No. You will not see that Bible verse. Fairness, no. Oh, he says, God is no respecter of what? Any person. There is no where. But those ones that find the word of God and the Holy Spirit reveals to them the one thing that you will understand is I don't go in fairness, I go in favor. Hallelujah. Two people can be going for the same job. But if you have a scripture redeemed, anointed, you will find yourself getting that job instead of the other person. Because there is no Bible word that says fair, fairness. No. The God of heavens also wants to make sure that all truth is manifesting in you as an individual. Is manifesting in you as a family, in you as a business person, in you as somebody who has been called in any ministry. Hallelujah. Therefore, do not waste all this time. Get a revelation today. The most ignored one is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of truth has come. He is guiding us into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you how many things, all things to come. Hallelujah. Certain things have happened in your life. You cannot do anything about it. But what you can do now is to let him to be as he's dwelling in you to provoke him. He has been left alone in your, in your, in, in your heart for a long time. You have not made use of him for a long time. Start to speak. That's why you speak as you are speaking. That's why you hope as you are hoping. Man, consult him. There is a consultant inside you. There is a consultant inside you. Hallelujah. He knows all things that any other consultant knows. I am speaking to you in this month because I want us in the springs of life to deeply go into the revelation and deeply have roots. Hallelujah. We want to have what? Roots. I was talking to somebody in the week. And we came to about trees. I remember I was speaking to them. I was outside the office. And I was looking at actually a tree. When the, before you see what we are seeing. Before you see the green that you are seeing, ladies and gentlemen. This tree spends so much time. This seed spends so much time to have roots. To have what? Roots. This is the best challenge if you look and reflect. I was reflecting upon my life. Where I have had no roots in my future, in my, my life. I'm having problems. You go into marriage without any fruits, you know how it is? It's simple. It will look as if, but it will dry up. You go in a job, you go in a relationship, everything that has no roots. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why my people are perishing. That's why we are where we are. But thanks to God. He has given us victory. Hallelujah. What is the depth of revelation? 
I was asking God this week, you know the depth of revelation you have overlooked until now. Do you know the depth is immeasurable? That depth is in your heart. Because he says the Holy Spirit will come. Where is he going to dwell? In your heart. Therefore, if you want to know the height, the magnitude, the size of revelation is immeasurable. It's sitting in you. That's why the Bible says God instructs us without you, his word, you will not prevail. But this heart, this spirit is so deep, ladies and gentlemen, it keeps a lot of things. It happens a lot of things. God knew exactly where to place in you a thing that is immeasurable. How he is going to react, how he is going to operate in ourselves. Therefore, what is this revelation? Revelation is spiritual understanding of the truth. Hallelujah. Revelation is spiritual understanding of the truth regarding subject matters. In subject matter. Because we learned from John 16, 13, the Bible is says, He will guide you into what truth. The Holy Spirit has got nothing, nothing to deal or to do with anything contrary to the truth. Holy Spirit does not get involved in falsehood. That's why you see, when you are born again, spirit filled, big ministry, everything going on well, but the moment you start ignoring the Holy Spirit, he moves, away. he leaves you alone. Danger. No, today, why we are in certain positions is because he cannot do. He cannot be engaged in lies. He cannot be engaged in gossip. He has no time to do all these things. As for you in this month, the word is coming. Revelation is a spiritual understanding of the truth regarding any subject matter. So appropriate understanding is needed as it relates to every issue in your hand. Hallelujah. So I take the word. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I take that word and I take it to be the truth in the subject of sickness and disease that I am facing. How? Meditate upon it. You know, when you start this, this, the word of God, the Holy Spirit starts to connect, interconnect a word. You will not look at a word of God out of context. They are connected. The words of God, they are connected. I want you to know there is no deeper depth no deeper depth than the depth of your heart. There is no bigger volume than the volume of your heart. If God said he would make the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, surely. You know how many things go into your heart, into your spirit, since you were born. Since you were born. Everything is in there. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with what? Diligence. 
For out of it springs issues of what? Life. The depth of your heart is immeasurable. Keep your heart with all diligence. You know, when I stand and I start proclaiming about myself, I don't do, I don't do stress. I told you how I started learning these things. When I was doing evangelism in this country, everybody, you give most of them. I don't do God. I don't do God. I said, this sounds very nice. I will, I don't do stress. When you say I don't do God, I don't do stress. I don't do the devil. I don't do gossip. I don't go do poverty. I don't do luck. I don't do flu. I don't do flu. You've been, I mean, Regina has been with me for a long time. I don't do flu. No. They do it. I don't do it. I don't do But it takes a person to know why and how. Because you keep your heart with all diligence. Hallelujah. You are working. Everything that is in your heart is worked out with diligence. No negligence. By putting in, hallelujah, the word of God. So when they are coming, because the fight, you know what, what fighting is all about. Fighting is what somebody wants it in his own way. That's why people fight. <laughs> the people fight. It's simple why people fight. Because I want it in my own way. So the devil fights the children of God because he wants it his way. Know you today, the simplest definition of battle is I want it my way. Most of the times, it's not even getting a weapon or getting a gun to do fat. No. Most of the time is the word. The word. Hallelujah. The word. That's why the depth and the volume of your heart is so depth that the word of God can go in and in and in and in. You will die, you will not feel it. And do you know what will happen out of it? Your issues of, if you put in health, your issues of health, they will come out. Issues of joy, they come out. Hallelujah. Please stop spending on things. You know, people can have a sleepless night. You know, how would you start somebody do, how would they say this to me? How, how could, could they it's one o'clock, one a.m., one thirty, two a.m., three a.m. You are still wriggling on your bed. God forbid. Out of the issues of your life, they spring forth from what is in your heart, in your heart. Hallelujah. Hey, one Corinthians two, verse ten to twelve. Revelation about these issues, about this diligence in our heart. From Galatians 2 10 to 12. But God has revealed them to us through His word, Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. That little that thing, the Wi-Fi, the moment you put it on, it switched on, you put the computers, it, the first thing the computer or your phone will say is no internet connection. No what? Internet connection. What is the practicality of it? I am looking. Amen. I am not looking. Then we head, we get the message from the computers of the phones. We switch on. We switch on. 
Hallelujah. We do what? Switch on for you. It is not switching on the Holy Spirit. It is a connection. You need a connection. So that you can go deeper. He says, yes, the deep things of what God. There are certain things that are so deep. They are not revealed to anybody that is not in the spirit. But in this month going forward, you will have these deep things and you come to liberty because it says, now, where, it says, the Bible says, now, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. It's, the Bible says, now, this guy, this woman, this ministry, this young man has had it revealed. He's had it given to them. But God has revealed them to us through his Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is the Wi-Fi of God. Hallelujah. So, if it is something is, is not working, that's why we are going to the depth of him. Hallelujah. It's not working, then I need to search. Hallelujah. Zerubbabel, it is not by power, it is not by might, but by who? The Spirit of God. Amen. This Holy Spirit, I have come, is the most ignored one. Two things in my life that are coming into me. There is praise and worship. You know, praise and worship is the most ignored. You go to a church, sometimes they go like, we have run out of time. We are not going to do praise and worship. I, I've been in church like that. The, oh, no, 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 no. Announcement. But this guy who was doing announcements, he took 45 minutes. So who this? The, they will read so and so is sick. So and see is this. So and see is the trouble. Then and then, no praise and worship. Yet in heaven, is the only thing we'll be doing. Critical things, ladies and gentlemen, must they are must. They are a must. I must walk with the Holy Spirit. I must. I must convene with the Holy Spirit. I must read the word of God. What are you saying, Holy? It's a must. For a child of God, it's a must. Otherwise, I, I go, I'm going to be you be taken to any. You are near of heaven. You go in a coma if you don't read the Bible. If you don't go and co convene and commune with this amazing person. Hallelujah. Let's go to the other verse. Verse 11. So what man knows the things of a man for what man knows the things for a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god hallelujah let's go to verse 12. now hallelujah say with me now now in springs of life now as you are hearing this word we have received hallelujah now we have received not the spirit of the world hey, i got like there is a spirit of the world somewhere there is a spirit of the world that's what i have always challenged myself but if people believe that there is a Satan, then there must be God. Yes. Hallelujah. If people believe that there are witches and witchcraft, then there must also be angels of the Lord. Amen. It's, it, the whole thing has to balance all the times. But for you, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit 
who is from God, that we might know the things that we have been freely given to us by God. Amen. They are for free. Hallelujah. They are for free. Hallelujah. We things very expensive, but ushered to us by his grace, by him who died and got crucified specifically for us. Now, where am I trying to take ourselves to? I am trying to take ourselves to move from emptiness to fullness. Amen. From emptiness. Because I have oftentimes met people, all they talk about is how empty they are. How empty they are. And I go like, but you got this, you got that, you got this, you got that. How come you feel empty? Without Jesus Christ, you will always be empty. Without the word of God, you will not ask those billionaires. The wanting, the wanting. That's why David in Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what want. These things, they are the ones why we are into revelation this week. You don't just read, why did David say all that? How come? Holy Spirit, show me. Why would David just arise in the morning and just write, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Every word, he says, the Bible says, every word is what spirit, what food. Every word in the Bible, it is what spirit food. Hallelujah. And those revelations, they are carried in the depth of the knowledge of God. And when you go into that, the deeper, I said, the much understanding, the greater, much understanding of spiritual things, the deeper the results, the greater the results. Hallelujah. I was telling one of the ladies in the week, we were speaking about the power of teamwork. The power of teamwork. If you look from the time God creates teamwork, Adam and Eve. The time Jesus Christ comes in, the first thing he does is he is looking for disciples. Power of teamwork. So why is it difficult on teamwork? Because teamwork delivers. Teamwork is oneness. Amen? Teamwork is what? Oneness. And do you know that oneness, what it means? Holy Spirit. It says they were in the upper room. Amen? They were in the upper room. What were they waiting for? Oneness. Oneness. Amen? In you, the spirit, the body, and the soul, the oneness comes in by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. This one, the job, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, when you receive, which you have, when you start provoking him, when you start engaging in him. He has never gone back. Jesus says, I am, and he is coming, isn't it? I am going, and he is coming. And they received. We received. Hallelujah. Everyone, even that person, you get, you look down on them. Holy Spirit is what? In them. By grace is in them. But the problem is ignorance the problem is the urge the diligence the hunger hallelujah that's why in those revelations of god give me hunger give me hunger give me hunger for your word give me hunger 
give me hunger. You know, he will give you hunger. You will be so hungry of the word of God. I will, I will, I'm thirsty. Feel me, feel me today. What is this regarding? I am hungry for prayer. I'm hungry for praise. I'm hungry for worship. That's his job. Hallelujah. That's his job. Amen. Arise and shine. For your light has what? Come. That light comes in a form of revelation. Amen. That light comes in the form of one revelation. Because, as I said at the beginning, you can't shine without a light. This week, go. Amen. For every revelation you have, if you see darkness, ask the Holy Spirit. I want to shine here. We want to shine here. We want the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is not darkness, ladies and gentlemen. It's shining glory. It, it is dazzling glory. Hallelujah. It is dazzling glory. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? God is changing you from shining to suffer to uh, from suffering to shining. God is ending up every struggle because of a revelation in your life. By it, you will know how to enforce next levels in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me surprise you. So, what are these things that the Holy Spirit has revealed? <laughs> Hallelujah. What are these things? 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. You know this very well. I want you to know how you know, exciting it is. How exciting it is to notice that the things of the world do not carry any revelation. No, it's just knowledge. But the things of God, you need the Holy Spirit. What are these things? You know this verse very well. But it is written. Yeah? How, what is it? It is written. I has not seen. That's why they have to be what? Reviewed. Hallelujah. <laughs> I has not. It is what? It is written. It is in the writings. That's why you need to read. To read. And not just read. You can be a professor of the Bible. But it has to be what? Reviewed. Hallelujah. He says, but it is written. Amen. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. That's the duty of the Holy Spirit. They can only be revealed to you because then you will change from having eyes but you cannot see. They have eyes, they don't see. They have both ears, they don't hear. Why don't they do it? Because there is an element that is missing. But today, that element, you have come to know it. That it is not by power, it is not by might, Zerubbabel, but by what? His spirit. You will always win. You will always triumph. You will always overcome with the Holy Spirit. With revelation, you will always overcome. Hallelujah. We looked at last week. If you remember, they were the week before. They were talking of Elijah. They said, we want to attack, we want to attack. And the Holy Spirit was revealing everything to, to Elijah. This is what their plan, this is what they do. This, you know, he simply takes you out of danger into safety. Amen. Revelation, a man of revelation walks out of danger into what? Safety. They walk through out in through fire, but yet not fire. 
Daniel, Shadrach, Abednego, they were thrown in fire. You know, if you don't have a revelation, you throw, you throw yourself on fire. You tell people, throw me on fire. Throw me in the fire. Throw me in the fire. No revelation. You burn. <laughs> you, you are going to turn into charcoal. But these guys, they only had that power because they had what? Revelation. Therefore, a man of revelation is a man of power. Hallelujah. Because he said, I have given, you will receive what? Power. What did you say? You will receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has what? Come upon you. Amen. A person of revelation is a person of what? Power. Please don't attempt anything if you are powerless. You will just shame yourself. Hallelujah. So, you are of God. Things and head of things that the Holy Spirit is revealing to us, they are your portion. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13, 14. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 2, 13 to 14. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit he is also a what? A teacher. Hallelujah. He is also what? A teacher. Well, how does he do your teaching? I like this one. He says, comparing. Hallelujah. Comparing. Amen. <laughs> he sits there with you. He compares Sister Regina and his sister, sister Auntie. Let's say Sister Auntie. Amen. We he compare spiritual things and what he's the teacher. That's why we want to be deep rooted in a revelation in this month. Hallelujah. Comparing spiritual things and spiritual. Be aware. That's why the Bible has put a warning about false prophets. Amen. That's why he, the Bible is warning. It's not every time that a person who says, I can stand here on the pulpit, start speaking, speaking. You need to know your Bible. You need to know your Bible. There have been TikToks. I don't know how true there have been TikToks whereby a person has gone to preach in another country and he is singing a song that is not even a present worship. And the whole church the whole, the, the whole, the whole church, they are singing that song. It's got nothing with the praise. How are we going to know these things? He will teach us these things. We also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches. No. Hallelujah. That we want to grow. We want to go deeper. We want to go higher. We want to go to another level. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Verse 14. But the natural man does not receive these things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. No, can he know them because they are spiritually descended? Which part of this verse are you not understanding, ladies and gentlemen, about the foolishness? I have been a fool before you in so many, you know, before, even on the on first of April in England is Fool's Day. <laughs> Therefore, they went to a day you don't even choose that there has to be a fool's day because foolishness is there. You cannot avoid foolishness is there. But if you are that spiritual man, you will not. The Holy Spirit will help you to discern. Amen. You know, this deep rooting I am bringing to you is not ordinary things. Ladies and gentlemen, it's extraordinary things. Do you know 
when the, that natural spirit they call spirit spirit of man wisdom yeah i think you heard there were exchange of uh, prisoners of war last week between russia uh, germany usa and so forth they were exchange exchanging wisdom now in that place in that exchange there was one guy who was kgb a spy for russia and this guy was being held in Germany for I think three or four years. I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember how long. But when he landed in Moscow, he was received by the president of Russia. Yeah. The wisdom of what man is there. The wisdom of man is there. They can spy. The wisdom of man is there. It is there you cannot in any way ignore it. And when he started greeting them, he started greeting them in their language. They had two daughters. These guys, since then, two daughters. Do you know these daughter, two daughters, they only knew that they are Russians on that day. They had not known all. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know, because they are not supernaturally discerned. What I am trying to say to you is, beware there is wisdom of man. Beware. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says it, we should not be ignorant of what? The devices of the enemy. Man can do, man can do a lot, but you have to be above. Hallelujah. You have to be what? Above. So that you become a man and a woman of insight. Amen. Not just a woman, a woman and a woman of sight, no, but a woman of woman of inside. Insight. Hallelujah. Insight means in your heart that you can see. I have been speaking to this gentleman. I have been speaking to this man, especially for our children, our kids. Uh, yeah, I love you. I love you. You know, this love thing is very dangerous. <laughs> very, very dangerous. And when we start talking to telling them, they don't want to listen. No. He said, my friend, this is, I have been there. You know, what I'm saying is about the wisdom of what man. This wisdom of man is like experience. I have been there. No, 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 no. You are the daddy. Oh, the, oh, they don't want me to marry. They just, you know, they don't want to. That's all that, that, that. They don't understand that you and me, is it? Yeah, I, no, no, I love you very much. No. You need to have a spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. Every situation, not every job is for a child of God. Not every job. I was, I remember I was with my, it was my brother. My brother opened a pub. My brother opened. And I said, my brother, I hate that you go to a pub. He says, yes. I said, who, 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 can you tell me, how is it doing? Excited. Yes, 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 yes. But ladies and gentlemen, not every business. <laughs> not every business. Not every job. Not every friend. Not every friend. You can only realize that, amen, when spiritually descend. Hallelujah. I am equipping you. This time is about equipping. You know, we saw at the beginning, the world is at war. You don't need it to be now spiritually. What? Descend. No, no. This time, no, no. Look on our streets. The world is what? At war. You talk of this, you talk of this country, you talk of this. We are at war. We are at war. But the battle is not yours. Hallelujah. Your blessing is bigger than the battle. Your blessing is higher than any other level in your life. And how can you do this? By 
revelation. Hallelujah. By what? Revelation. You can move from foolishness to wisdom of Christ. Have you not read this? It is written. Have you not read? You have the mind of Christ. Amen. You have a mind of what? Christ. I repeat. The mind you have is the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. What would the mind of Christ did? Mark 2 verse 8. <laughs> the mind of Christ. Mark 2 verse 8. But immediately. Hallelujah. When you have. Which you have. And you have the Holy Spirit. He's become part of you. Not a stranger to you. Things happen what? Immediately. But immediately when Jesus perceived. Hallelujah. When Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned that's within themselves. He said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? The Holy Spirit is the discerner. Amen. Is the discerner. You be, it's not, if you have the mind of Christ, you are able to do this. You are able, I, I need to challenge you, you are able to do. Just because it is not happening, it doesn't mean it cannot happen. <laughs> Amen. Just because it is, it is not happening in your life, in your ministry, in your family, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It what happens because with God all things are what? Possible. Don't be lied, don't be cheated. Amen. I have said to you guys before, and to many people, you know, I was back home. I was a FC for a, a, a housing corporation. And when I was leaving, everybody was like, this company is going to go. You are the best. And we don't know what will happen. <laughs> Do you know what? They were lying to me. My friend, what you can do, somebody can do better. You have to know this. What, what you can do, somebody can do better. Is there? Is there? Is, they've gone to that another level. <laughs> what should matter to you is yourself. Hallelujah. You need these revelations in your lives. Lest you will be fighting with a door that has closed. When one door has closed, seven more doors run open. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a period, it's a time of revelations. Amen. Somebody, you know, somebody can will do it better. If, if tomorrow I, I, I decide, no, 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 I'm not preaching again in, 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 in the springs of life in the heart. I've had enough. It's me who has got what? Enough. God hasn't got enough. No, no, no. He's doing. Somebody can do better. Somebody. You need to know these things because they can only be spiritually discerned. Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Thank you, Jesus. May revelation differentiate you from any other believer. Hallelujah. The difference, what this revelation will do, this, if you diligently pursue it, you will be different from any other believer. I have said you, we don't walk in fairness, we walk in favor. Amen. Grace. People have actually some people, some preachers, I've heard them. They say grace is unmerited favor. Yes. That's what they say. Grace is, we don't walk in fairness. We walk in unmerited favor. Hallelujah. And this unmerited favor, you know how it happens? But God, yeah, eyes have not seen. Amen. So when you start seeing it, this favor starts this favor starts working in you this favor starts 
identifying and isolating you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You will not miss your turn this month in Jesus' name. I declare your turn has now come in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Matthew 16, verse 13 to 15. Revelation differentiates a believer to, to an unbeliever. To an unbeliever. <laughs> Listen to this. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philip, he asked his disciples, staying. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love this. He didn't go to the market street. No, he didn't go to uh, wherever. No. He went to his disciples and he started asking him, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, I am? Who do they say? Who do they say? <laughs> He's asking swings of life, you. Who do they say? 14. But, huh? so they said, hallelujah. So they what? Say, when they said it, it means it was together. So they say, some, they say you are John. <laughs> the Baptist, some, they say Elijah. And others, they say Jeremiah. Or oh, one of the prophets. Let's stop there. We can add now, isn't it? But the Bible says we should not add. Now, some they say Jesus is who? <laughs> the, the, the son of Carpenter. Jesus. They, they, this verse is live. I'm, I want to show you the difference of my words and the words of God. The scriptures are alive, they are live call. Isaiah actually said, a live call was put on my word lips not dead this word this if we go in the street now we say who is jesus seriously even among ourselves if we did a bible study oh who 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 do you say jesus is who do you say jesus is to you it's a personal it's a personal one that requires this man's theme of deep word revelation hallelujah this question to be answered some of you have not answered it some of us we've only half answered it but we need a full answer amen we can only that get that full answer by cooperating operating under the holy spirit amen that's why this month we've been leading to that we've been led to that place some they say you are the john the baptist uh, others they say you are elijah others they are saying you are jeremiah others they are saying you are the prophet and verse 15 he said to them but what do you say i am what do you say jesus is what do you say? <laughs> what do we say Jesus is to our children? What do we say Jesus is to our colleagues at work? What do we say Jesus is to our business fellows? What do we say? Do we hide? We don't say. That's why Paul came around. I said the word is interlinked. Okay, just... I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Hey, I don't know. Have you been? I was at one point. I can confess I was at one point. Situations, they make you to not to confess Jesus Christ. And you say, oh, I've just been wise. 
No. The wisdom of man is foolishness. You need the Holy Spirit to help you in this moving. This is what I'm trying to emphasize on us. Hallelujah. You can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. Without Christ, you cannot do all things. You just do half things. But while you are on earth, you are supposed to complete your assignment. Why? Because he whom you follow, Jesus Christ, completed his assignment. Hallelujah. And he says it is finished. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, has got a capacity to complete the assignment. Some people, I, I know, I don't want to be one of them. You arrive to heaven, they'll say you have arrived too early. What, what happened? I was involved in a car accident. What way, where were you coming from? You have just arrived too early. I know the houses, they are already completed. But Jesus Christ, whom you follow, there is a deep revelation. He completed assignment. That's why I say to you, you are for a purpose. You didn't just happen. You did just happen. No. No matter how you were born, it, it, things don't just happen. It just don't happen. No. You are a purpose. God loves you. God cares of you. It doesn't matter what everybody talks about you. It's what the revelation you have that in Christ Jesus, you are a son of God. You are a child of God. I am saying to you, your turn has come. Hallelujah. Your turn what has what? Come. You will not miss. When your turn has come, ladies and gentlemen, it's either you miss it or you don't. But today, you will not miss it. Look at this lady. Her turn had come. 2 Kings 4 verse 9. We just look at examples and then we'll finish. We're doing very well on time today. 2 Kings 4 verse 9. Her turn had what? Come. <laughs> you know the story of this woman. You know, in Springs of Life, people read a lot of uh, Bible. 2 Kings 4 verse 9. And she said to who? To her husband. <laughs> Look now. I know that this is a holy man of God who passes us regularly. <laughs> Hatten has what had come. Somebody has been passing through you regularly, but your turn had come. You had not picked it. Why? Because there is absence of the Holy Spirit engagement in you. Husband and wife. The man was passing there. Both of them they were on their patio all the times in the morning on their uh, veranda. In their garden, so, oh, the money, this man, the money is passing. It's only when you have the Holy Spirit open your eyes that you see the man, the man, and then the Holy Spirit difference the difference between two people married who the Bible says the two shall be one. Two people they miss one, got it. Is this man? He passes, ah, he's a holy man. Hallelujah. And you read the whole story. It's true, she didn't miss it. Because sometimes the people say, he's a holy man, he's a holy man, he's a holy man. The next thing, they missed it. But this one didn't miss it. You read. She had her baby, fruit of the womb. The fruit of the womb died. The, the, the devil attacked it. The holy man came, resurrected. Hallelujah. So, these certain things, I say the critical things, they happen what? Regularly. They just go like that. Heart rates. They go, put, Regina will put you a thing on there. Your heart. Test your heart. Boom, 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 boom. Then Jehoshaphat said, this is irregular. This is irregular. This is the, boom, boom. It has to be what? Regularly. <laughs> it has to be what? Regularly. Hallelujah. It has to be 
regularly. It has actually been what? Regularly, but you have been missing it. <laughs> You've been missing it. May the Holy Spirit open all our eyes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May He turn everything that you've missed back in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, let's speak of another guy. Amen. Acts 10, verse 34. <laughs> Acts 10, verse 34. You enjoy it. You enjoy this. It's amazing. Just as you enjoyed with prayers. You know, when you start reading the Bible now, you see the importance of revelation. Amen? Hallelujah. Acts 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, <laughs> in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Hallelujah. In truth, in truth, I'm not lying. I have perceived. Now, I love this word perceive. Maybe you should copy it. <laughs> you need to perceive. I think the way these people have the experience of the Holy Spirit they, is a perception. Hallelujah. Perceiving. Hallelujah. Perceiving is deep, is more than receiving, I think. <laughs> we need to look in the dictionary. Perceiving. It's, I perceive. That God shows no one partiality. Ah, I said, hey, God, please show me a revelation of this because I used to be like everybody else. Say, ah, no, 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 no. What it's trying to say is uh, what God can do for uh, Asha, he can also do for Auntie Joyce. Yeah? But, 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 there has to be revelation. <laughs> but, yeah, because God is a righteous what? Judge. Amen. God is a righteous judge. He says, if the parents of this world, when they are kids, they ask them, I want a piece of bread. What do they do? They will not go and get a crab. No matter what, you would imagine Asha getting a crab when Eden has asked for a piece of bread. You go like, what, what, is the, what kind of evil is this? So if, you remember what I said, the Holy Spirit duty is to compare, hallelujah, to compare, to and what? So if the parents you, you get, give it till you give even more than. But I found this in a Primark, but no, I thought you are more than Primark. Therefore, I went to Max and Spencer. Therefore, here is your pencil. Oh, thank you very much, ma'am. How about your father in heaven? How about, you know, these things, I want you to start reading them with depth. Read the word of God with depth. Hallelujah. Don't go on the surface of the word of God. That kind of reading the heavens, they do it. Don't pray like the heathens do. They stand in the corner. It says they stand for everyone else to see them. No. Comparing the unspiritual to what? To the spiritual. That's the job of the Holy Spirit in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Therefore, you shall perceive continuously continually, regularly, that he who is in you is greater. I have said to myself, oh, the, he who is in me is greater than the one who is in this world. He, this week I have been using that word. Do you know what? The word of God is alive. He is indeed greater. He is indeed mighty. Hallelujah. He is indeed above everything. 
every word that has come from his mouth, it is written, it shall not go back to you void. Never. No matter a mistake you made. He says when you make a turn, you know, the turn I was looking at, you know the turn around that is required for a child of God. It's not a right hand turn. It's not a left hand turn. It is a U turn. It is a U turn. It's one of the revelation. Because the right hand, it will still leave you with certain things. You have part of that and part of this. If you are really going to start all over again, don't do a left turn. Don't do a right turn. You need a U turn. You need a U turn. A U turn means you are saying to yourself, enough is what? Enough. That's what it is to do with the U turn. Enough is enough. Just one minute, this, my phone has gone off the Zoom. It's enough is enough. Recording in progress. Yeah, so we need to arise to that level. Not to be taken ignorant. It's about a U10. There are certain things, most of the things, even myself, I assess myself, you need to do what? A U10. And he says, as you're doing a U10, you say, enough is enough. By the time you finish, enough is enough. Do you know what happens? Poverty change into richness. When you do a U10, you are no longer going the wrong direction. It means things have started one changing, and it is an immediately changing. It is changing immediately. Hallelujah. May the revelation study of this month honestly build you to another level. Nehemiah 6 verse 12, the last one, then we'll be going home. Nehemiah 6 verse 12. You've been doing very well today, frankly. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Grace be upon you in Jesus' name. Then I perceive, oh, this perceive is too much. Then I perceive that God had not sent him at all. <laughs> this is Nehemiah. <laughs> I perceive that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Senebalad had hired him. <laughs> <laughs> Some people they are hired. <laughs> Some people, and I remember when I was at a conference when I had been born again in those days back home. And uh, some people, as when the preacher preached, it was fireworks. You know, those uh, born again in those days. God, then we started hearing voices at, at, at the end. Uh, people were falling and so forth. Then they were grabbed to come in front. They started confessing themselves. Oh, we are witches. We are witches. We were hired to cause confusion in this gathering. I'm so sure you've heard this. Yeah. yeah? They started manifesting, vomiting, doing stuff, a lot of things. <laughs> and it was like, ah. Then I read this. Hey. hey. God had not sent him at all. <laughs> <laughs> this one was not God sent at all <laughs> but he had pronounced this prophecy I have had this kind of thing a person had come to do a prophecy to me and they forgot that I had told them the issue I was <laughs> I told them you know this is what God was you know that's what the Holy Spirit does then this this then they went around and they sent me a text seven days later. I was praying about you, Pastor. Then this is what I saw. I said, Oh, Nehemiah, what did you say? Ah, 
Hallelujah. What am I saying is, it's the significance of us and the Holy Spirit. It's so important. It is so imperative. It's especially now. It would not be the time that you needed God most than now. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how you feel, but sometimes I feel like bringing myself on the floor and rolling. This is the time that you needed God most. Pray. Be in church. You, not only physical, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not doing a campaign, no. But this time, this time is an important time. It is a very vital moment because things are happening. And Jesus is coming back soon. You might be among those that can be taken to heaven. Let's be positive. Amen. You can be among those that suddenly you have gone because this is our last destination. The last destination for each one of us is heaven. But it then what matters is what side of heaven are you going to destiny? What side of heaven are you going to? People get a same, same bus, but it matters where you sit. I have seen these days when you are doing a plan, you have to choose a seat. And in those days, it was free. But if you choose certain seats, you have to pay. But in heaven, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay to be in paradise. No. You don't have to pay. You have nothing. Thing is zilch zero. Hallelujah. It's not a campaign. No, I know it's, you are very busy. I am one of the busiest person. We are very busy. But there is a destination that we need to go by the Holy Spirit. If you die now, where would you find yourself? This is the most preaching message that every evangelist did. It moved me. I remember for me to receive Christ, it was the same. I was asked. And I remember it came to me so vividly. The guy just went, I am asking, if you die right now, where you go? And I heard an echo say, if John, you die now, where are you going to be? That's how I changed my life. The guy simply said, if you are here, and you die now. Because people think it's a joke. They joke about that. Ah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, on my last day, I'll call the preacher. Uh, then he is going to. No. That's how, that's how my life transformed. I've, I've told you guys, my, my wife, I met, my wife was born again when she was 11 years old. And she met me when I was 16. We started going out when 16 at the same high school. And son of a preacher in a preacher's house, we were doing all stuff, preaching. I was in the choir. Everybody knows the, the, this voice that we, I can't now, but it was in the choir. <laughs> I can't sing now. <laughs> but I was in the choir. The son. The son of the reverend, it was a man to show yourself. <laughs> you have to show yourself. I, I, I had to keep, my, to me, I was keeping my dad's name. That it was very important. But do you know what I love for you? My dad and mom, they were prayer warriors. Their prayers. Now you as parents, they help prayers of, for your children, they help. That's all. I, I, I can't, I can't I set and do anything. Is because of their prayers. <laughs> because of their prayers, I met my girlfriend who had born again at three, 11 years. Therefore, anything contrary in a relationship during that friendship, even if I wanted, it could not happen. <laughs> it could not happen. And that kept me, kept me going, kept me going. 
21, 22, 23. We got engaged when I was 24. Our parents said, no, no, you guys, you've been on a relationship far right now. Said, oh, yeah, I think so. I, actually, part of it was because my wife was going to go abroad for her scholarship. So I said, you need to engage. So what am I saying today? I wasn't until now that day she took me. Hey, I was so much in love to do anything, anything. She made sure I was there. So you are a son of rev, let's go. We went and the, the guy said, if you die today, where are you going to find yourself? There is a heaven or hell destination. If you die today, where are you going to go? And the, it echoed from heaven. John, if you die today, and I stood from there. I stood. I remember in, the, in the, that time I was already a financial accountant for my organization. In front of people, they were there. In front of people. When I went to the office, the first person to congratulate me was my personal assistant. Then, ha <laughs> ha, boss, I saw you. You. Welcome, welcome. I saw you. I was pretending in the office all those years to her. When she says, I have to go for prayer, she says, Go in Jesus' name, be blessed. You know, they know it very well in Jesus' name. They know, they know. I was among them. I knew, I knew exactly what to talk to tell them. <laughs> what I want to hear. <laughs> so how did you spend it and I said, hey, I was watching something, you know, night of prayer that prayer is good night of prayer is good I was there <laughs> but, you know, after that I started reading the word of God it says ah, the first word was that if we say that we do not commit sin we deceive ourselves. I said, so all along I've been deceiving myself. <laughs> I was cheating myself for no reason. For no reason. I was pretending. Pretending. No. You be exposed. <laughs> Pretend. You be exposed. You will be exposed. That's why the doctors, they know if they test you, they check you. And they find that inside there is an issue. You see, you complained. Yeah. There is an issue. They want to what? Expose it. And they will go, come for an operation. Amen? Come upon. And they will go, cut you all over. Say, we found the issue. This is what? The issue. If the doctors of the world do this to the eye to you and me, can you imagine the doctor of doctors of heaven? He doesn't need a knife. He doesn't need you to change. I don't know why I'm doing evangelism now. You need to change. We need to change. It's as simple as that. Why are we clinging to all these things? I have no problem with you. The problem is with you. Because when you go to heaven, the day, the destination will be determined. And the determining the destination is not pastor. It is yourself. Hallelujah. He's given you power of choice to choose death or to choose life. But I say to you now, choose life. Let's all stand. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name, for your word, for this house, for such great love. I declare upon your people right now, King of Kings, a spirit of revelation to dwell in them. Father, ignite fire in the heart of this somebody who is standing before you now in Jesus' name. Father, ignite fire in the child, in our children right now. Reignite the fire. Reignite the fire. I pray into that spirit in Jesus' name. Lord Almighty, I come against anybody who was giving up in life. Father, in Jesus' name, that there is no giving. You are the one. The final say comes from you in Jesus' name. Father, for their hopelessness situation, I pray today that this week in Jesus' name, as it has been revealed, God, that their turn has come. 
They are turned for transformation. They are turned for uplifting glory. They are turned for light. They are turned for joy. I declare healing here, divine healing against any sickness, any disease any spirit of infirmity i declare liberty here against any spirit of bondage any spirit of addiction be free in the mighty name of jesus your turn has come your time has come to shine to outshine in the name of jesus i plead the blood of jesus over you over the house of springs of life i proclaim a house that is highly favored in jesus name those looking for jobs i declare those jobs in abundance businessmen in abundance shifts in abundance breakthroughs father in all applications that have been pending applications that have been outstanding for a long time in the mighty name of jesus christ father we've seen even for our children that breakthroughs for their careers continue i pray right now father for more breakfast for our children in their careers. God, outdoors, indoors, in Jesus' name. Whatever, whoever has been holding our children's father breakthrough, now we just release the fire and take mighty God, the destiny for our children, in Jesus' name. As they are on holiday, I declare their protection, in Jesus' name. As they return to school, and I declare an excellent spirit. For every parent, I declare a spirit of wisdom over you. Love for your children. In the name of Jesus, I declare supplies from heaven. You will not beg because of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your children are for joy. Your children are for peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you and we pray in jesus mighty name amen and amen let's just pray uplift the elder bright who's traveled and his uh, uh wife in jesus name we just uplift the elder bright and uh, Teresa into your hands in jesus name lord wherever they are god i pray no weapon formed against them shall prosper for their service father save them the service that they do in this house the service that they do to your to your people god show yourself you are not a god of partiality show the mighty father in protection show the mighty in provision even for the children that are behind i cover them with the blood of jesus christ or oh, their three children in jesus mighty name 